doesn't seem to do so. Uh, it's tricky because obviously he's Japanese and he references a lot of Shinto uh, in his presentation of things like Misogi and Aikido. But uh, what he, as far as I can tell, is obviously Misogi is more than just standard Japanese. Okay, so let's go. And um, okay, uh, this is very dense. So the myriad gods and all the wonders they can perform are in fact within each one of us. The divine animates us. We are the universe. Izanagi and Izanami are eternally interacting inside our bodies. So Izanagi, archetypal male, Izanami, archetypal female, okay? Um, and they're both reference from the Kojiki, okay? Uh, we are an integral element of creation. The spirit animating the Kojiki is in our hearts. Uh, and, and apparently uh, what Osensei did is the Kojiki, he used the Kojiki as his formatting of the universe as a creation and also self-consciousness in the universe creation. So uh, he references the Kojiki quite a bit and uh, that was his thing, okay? And what he's talking about is not necessarily uh, that you have to study that, but on the other hand, it is kind of interesting to study that but to study him, his consciousness, as he uses the Kojiki, okay? And from here, to practice Aikido is to stand on the floating bridge of heaven. In the practice of Aikido, we can perceive reality. Okay, so uh, in some sense, you know, he kind of indicates there is a divine structure to the universe. And we coming out of that divine structure being a part of it are also divine, okay? We become like Izanagi and Izanami, bringing all things into being. Now in the Kojiki, Izanagi, Izanami, as a pair, stood on a place called the Floating Bridge of Heaven, in Japanese, Amen no Ukihashi. And they had a, magical spear, which was three-sided going into a point, and they stirred the heavenly brine, and they extended the spear out, and the drops of that brine fell off and congealed into the islands of Japan. And I've always thought, it was my own sense, was that the actual tail there was talking not just about the creation Japan, but also to some degree, the creation of Japan and that myth, a mirror of the creation of the universe. But the universe itself is not a fixed thing. It's really the creation that's ongoing. And the Izanagi, Izanami, they're kind of like represent the parents of that creation. And since we also come into being, as part of that creation, Izanagi, Izanami, uh, they're kami, they're divine energies. We are also the children of Izanagi, Izanagi. And so that's a lot of what well, Sensei's major rap. And the other thing is that oftentimes in Western religion, in the beginning there was the word, the word was. But here he's referencing that it takes a masculine and a feminine, an Izanagi and an Izanami, for there to be creation. Okay, so it's a little different. Now going forward, we're almost done with this, by the way. You must 
know your center. Know your center is in the middle of space. Draw yourself, draw yourself as a circle. A circle has the power to give birth to all things. It revolves and revolves. In advanced martial arts, we are taught to never focus on the opponent. The focus on the opponent is to be immediately defeated. Always form a circle that creates life. Okay? And uh, that is a load. Okay, so he is referencing a variety of different levels. For example, he says, you must know your center. Okay, so we oftentimes think of a center as maybe a, a column post or a point or just a place where we feel more in balance. But know your center is in the middle of space. Ah, okay, now right now, for example, I'm in the middle of this room and you know, I'm observing social distancing. And I realize that there's a problem going out uh, that, that you know, contract a very, very dangerous virus by going out irresponsibly or even you know, going out and behaving pretty responsibly. So there's kind of a risk going out. So I'm kind of confined in this reality. But he says, to re-quote it, know that your center is the middle space. But I'm also here. So a lot of the misogi is shifting your consciousness from the, the immediate situation into the fact that, okay, your center is in the middle of space. Okay, now this is very interesting, the next one. Draw yourself, draw yourself as a circle. And he is really talking about Izanagi, Izanami creating the universe. But he's also referencing know yourself as know your center and the center is the middle of space. Then you draw yourself as a circle. To some degree, we create ourselves and we create our own situation by our perception and consciousness of us, which is dependent upon our awareness and consciousness of who we are. Okay? And that's something that the docent said references quite a bit. He likes the whole term his body. Okay. But there's another level. The next level is Robert. And the next level after that is uh Nato. And the level after that is Mr. Nato. Okay. And then there's Nato Sensei. And I kind of hit him a lot and said, well why don't you go to the level of the Nato O Sensei? then you have everything that you wanted. And we laugh about that one. But, you know, that's the dimensional layout. Okay, so what we call I. Okay, consciousness. Original, but here. In matter. Right? Um, we're biological matter, which means we're very complex. We're not just matter. There's matter there, matter there, but we're living matter, very complex. And so we are something much vaster. Know your center in the middle of space, consciousness. But we're in this physical body, in this very physical dimension. Okay. And so we're simultaneously multi level. And so as we go back to a more original of ourselves, we start to realize, in some sense, we, we're also standing on that bridge holding the magic spear to some level. Okay. 
And the process of going from here to there, to some degree, is what my sense of what Osensei called me so. And it's uh, something, for example, that we can very easily think, well, I'm going to go and do all this ritual, which is important. Okay, if you like it. Uh, now those sensei once it went up to those sensei and asked him about that. And those sensei just said to him, you know, it was a very honest statement. He said, no, you don't have to do that to understand what Aikido is. I just like that stuff. So he liked it. He did it. And in the ritual practice of misopi or the waterfall practice, there is value. But he's also seen the case that that was something he liked. So it's a part of the Aikido, all right? But the term misogi for me is plenty of return. So here I am. And the physical dimension is very limited. Don't bump into things. Things bump into me. Situations come up like the uh, current uh, coronavirus crisis. Everywhere you look, there's a limitation, okay? Now, what he was talking about was, okay, but on the other hand, know your center. Your center exists in space. Space might be a representation of a more original consciousness. We're not just this, okay? Now, you can have that as knowledge here, but, you know, you address the fact that, you know, dimensional as consciousness goes back to its more original, there's more freedom. He says, create yourself as a circle. All right, well, that to me means that we are a creation as the universe is a creation. And to some degree, part of Misogi is getting our consciousness back to be more original of ourselves so we can consciously create ourselves. And he talks about create a more beautiful world, create virtue, create all those things. It's very difficult to do, you know, when I keep bumping into things and things keep bumping into me, and I keep reacting, that's called I. So as I goes back to its more original, it's freer, all right? Now, one of the things that uh, the Do Sensei kind of likes is the dimensional sense, is that, you know, like, for example, here, I'm gonna stand up. Right. I might feel kind of cramped because I've been sitting for a while. Uh, but as you kind of settle a bit, you, you become a bit more present. Um, you kind of know it's a little bit, the next level kind of floats up. Okay. Um, settle a little deeper. The next level before it's standing is feels breathing more fully. And the standing motion is more fluid. And if you settle a little deeper, that there's almost like a, a deep root that's bringing vital, you know, that, that allows vital energy. So we tend to, out of our sense perception is here. But, and then that motion. Now here, this level, I'm starting to pick up circle, counter circle. And settle a little deeper. I was feeling the breathing being a little deeper. Now all of a sudden there's that sense when it starts to touch the root, there's a breath. Breath, of course, the breathing goes in and out, but the breath is something that's a bit, it's a background, it's the space for the breathing. Oh and movement off of that. So the dimensional sense, you can use a sit stand, you can use, raise your arm, uh, you can use some weapons, okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, just, uh, David, what's the time like right now? It's 20 minutes past 12. Okay, that's about right. You know, I just thought what we do is a little bit of that, but something that you can try, okay? I'm just going to stand up, all right? Settle a little deeper.
standing. It's I kind of float up as opposed to I have to stand. And again, I start to just start, the more you work the dimensional stuff, the quicker the process happens. I'm starting to catch the under root. So each of those, we're using the body because the body exists on dimensional levels. It's a level one, a level two, a level three. But as the body and the motion is finer, I begins its journey back more to the self. Okay? And I think what our sensei found, for example, um, he trained his body, martial arts, he did a lot of practice, ritual misogy, meditation, things like that. But as the consciousness gets more back to its more original nature, okay, then we. Mm -hmm. And so within that, the Aikido movement, whether you're going to swing a sword or thrust move. We're going to go into that a little bit uh, when I move into the next room. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to do right now. But it's good practice. Okay, in other words, so you'll find that uh, the level one, uh, I, I mean, you don't bump, on a good day, you're, you're okay, but on a bad day, you, know, you just bump into things and things bump into you. There's several little people. As we switch our consciousness, our relationship spatially to things also shift. So in some sense, you can't create a better world as you go back or I go back more towards an original state of I as a self. And or since say you reached a level uh, where, where he was so his self was so original, maybe you know you might say he was standing alone. Izanagi, Izanami, in that mythical place, the floating bridge of heaven, that the universe came out of. But also, as he said, know your center, then you create yourself as a circle. You are also a creation. And as you get back to that original, it says Izanagi, Izanami, created the islands of Japan, symbolically, possibly, the physical universe. And what happens here is we also create ourselves, you know, and as we get back to the more original of ourselves, where we're standing on that bridge with these Anagi and these Anagi, then we might, for example, have access to all the magical forces in that heavenly mind that materialize the islands of Japan. Okay, so we're going to move. I'm moving room so we can. Okay, so let me. Okay. So let's shift. Uh, David, is it better this way or this way? What, what, what's your read? I like that bay better. This one? Okay. So we will move back a little bit. And uh, I have uh, this. Okay. Um, Umbrella will work. Uh, a chill length or a bow length inside is this. If you can do it, fine, but you may break something. <laughs> and also, uh, restrictions, bang, all right. So, uh, this is a short staff, fine. Well, since they apparently had a pointer stick to carry with them, but the nice thing, you could be a sword or it can be a staff, or it can be a spear, okay? 
So what I thought we'd do a little bit is uh, <sighs> now right here when I'm gripping right hand the it's a sword point, okay? Level one. Level one. Sword goes up. I raise the sword I got. Okay, just gonna see on this level because the sword pulls me in. Right. I'm conscious of that and what I'm trying to do with it with the sword. Right. I've just have a little deeper. Uh, level two, okay. Um, I began to notice the in breath, out breath of my own system coinciding with the cup. Level three, I'm starting to get a feeling of the ground. I'm feeling the ground, the up down of the motion is much freer. Okay. Settle a little deeper, level four. All right. Um, mm, mm, mm. But we've been using the image of you're sitting on a safe with a chain that safe drops. Okay, so as I say, if you're sitting on a safe, they're going, ah. When that safe drops, you're going to feel the up. It's not so much you raise. But the whole system is going down. So boom. Right about level four. Boom. The two movements become one. They're starting to become one. Boom. Boom. Okay. If you go another level, uh, level four is a pretty good one. Right? It's a good training level. Right. Okay. About this level, I start to uh, get to where, uh, what are you saying? Your center is a point in space. So what I'm doing right here is, is there's that space. I'm not so much into, I'm doing this movement or this movement, boom, is doing itself in a good way. But the feeling is there's motion. There's motion. But that space, boom, there's a stillness, boom, boom. So we went about five levels. Um, sorting each out, okay, is important. Um, this can also, rep four, a staff. Right side, I was told this in Japan. Right side, right foot, this is sore. I said, do you ever do this? <laughs> and they said, no. If you're on your left side, you do staff or spear. So for this one, mainly it's a thrusting motion. Boom. Thrusting motion. Okay? And the sword is basically a cutting motion. Up, down. So the same thing starts. I mean, there are basics, how your feet, how the grip is, you go from the top and so much on your knee. Instead of a tight grip, it's not too loose, but it's, it's uh, okay. Yep, right now, double one thrust. All right. Arms go out, boom, weight's just forward. I have a certain sense that it starts from the hip, not out there with a point. Boom. And it, in order for it to start from the hip, I gotta have some ground. Boom. I can't be hip, but I don't have ground. Boom. That's a level one. Right? Level two, boom. Level two, boom. I'm starting to pick up a rhythm. Boom. 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 Now, I don't have level one and level two. Uh, Little chaotic, so settled. And if you if you start to level two, I get confused. Well, go level one, level two, boom, boom. Almost get the feeling you're. It's kind of like a cannon, okay? Boom. If a shot's fired, continues out there, but the cannon doesn't. 
And here, the cannons jam. Boom. Okay, so that's a level two. Settle a little deeper, right? Uh, a level three. Boom. Level two. This is sort of weight or heaviness, which is important. Level three, it's got a drag again. Level three, boom. 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 Again, he's a freer. Boom. 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 Okay? In the uh, comic book movies, the first Iron Man suit <clears throat> was like that. And then Robert Downey Jr. goes back into his lab and creates much more movies. Stronger armor, boom. 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 He's able to do all these things. Yes, I can fly. Boom. All right? Okay. Just starts to lighten up around level three. Level four. Boom. 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 I get the feeling that uh, Bruce Lee put it this way. He said, it's not so much that, that, that I hit, it hits, it hits. All right, so boom, right about here, I should get a thing, boom. It thrusts, my whole system, not so much I thrust, but I get hit, but boom. Boom. And right about here, for example, then we, we start to get changes. And you can just work the cut or the thrust. For the dimension of the process. Okay, uh, David, what do we like uh, time wise? It's uh, 12 32. Oh, okay, so we got plenty of time. And what I thought I'd do today, because you're always learning, you're always learning. Okay, and one of the things that, that I, I started, I think it was yesterday, you know, because we do, for example, here, first change. Thumbs facing each other, second change. Thumbs face you, third change. Fourth change. Fourth change is kind of like the cannon. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Right? Okay. Wait, yeah, not so much. Wait through the fire. Okay. Fifth change. Thumb at this position, which is very good for what we call the fire water changes. Thumb down from the top, thumb up from the bottom, thumb down, thumb up, figure eight, thumb up, thumb down, and red. So from here. I can do the figure eight without, you know, I'm changing hands. I don't have to stop and grip my fingers. Those are the changes. Now, yesterday, what I started to get, you know, was so. Uh, now, left. Figure eight. Now, what I do with a staff, okay, or this short one, uh, you can work the middle when you're learning to change it initially. What I kind of want to be able to be here is I want to be like Stephen Curry with the basketball. Boom, 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 very cool. Very cool. Okay. But right here, left change. It's very interesting. I just start playing with the left change. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Because I've been mainly right change. Okay. All of a sudden, the left started to come up. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. So, like you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, for the Japanese samurai movies, you, you see the, the, the blind swords when you go. Okay? Right. Right. 
which historically, if you're a fan of Zato Uchi, he was at least partially based on O Sensei. Because O Sensei had sort of this ability to sense things. And so it's actually will make a character out of somebody that can't see who Okay? Boom. And his other senses, and it's sort of an energy sense for what's happening around him. And uh, he gives such a sense, they said that uh, for some of the really early Zanta reaching movies, he accompanied O Sensei to Kyoto, where the, the movies are being filmed. Uh, because O Sensei was, you know, first couple was sometimes a, a, a kind of a, a technical advisor. And I have no idea really what that, what he did or whatever it is. But see, for example, here at the left, we get the change here. Boom, boom. We change back to the right. Boom, boom, boom. Left, boom, 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 boom. Now, right about here, for example, you get this, the third change. Third change. Boom, boom. Just did. The fifth change. And you could go and drop that position. Right? So a lot of this what you do is you, you kind of um, Yeah. Now, if you go dimensional, level one goes and it needs a sequence. Set a little deeper. Level two, you know, knows the movements a little bit. Beginning to catch how the movements connect. Level three, so a little deeper. And then start to happen. First change. Second change. Third change. Fourth change. Fifth change. Sick. And now we're back to the figure eight, and we're back to the fire water changes. Third change. Right? So it's a pick up right about there. Around about the fourth level, uh, the movements start to happen. You're still there. And when you're playing levels, you know, you're go back to the previous one. Learn your changes. First, second, third, second, third, fourth, fifth, fourth, 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 fourth. Okay. Then go to the second one where they start to interact a little bit. Two, three moves at a time. Get to the third change where it starts to kind of flow a bit more. All right. Fourth, those run that start to begin to happen. If you know movements, if most people have a set of movements, that that's still not so good. All of a sudden, you know, when you start to be able to do you know, first change, second change, third change, 
fourth change, fifth change, back to the figure eight by water changes. So as you begin to do that, the system frees up. Uh, uh, and for that, for example, the, 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 let's be referencing at that level, let's show it. The movement with a space. You see, you're existing in space. And you're constantly forming the circle, creating yourself through the movements. And that might be a one way of us in say explaining how we stand with these anagi, these anagi on that floating bridge. Okay? So as it gets freer, boom, 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 boom. You have more fun creating yourself as a circle. This is not Budo, but more like a Stephen Curry behind the back between the legs. You know, you fun around a little bit. Uh, Budo people say that's a bunch of crap, and they're probably correct. But that's the ball play. Stephen Curry do some pretty hot Aikido if he were ever reduced to it. So when you are right about level five. Your point is in space. And that's where you start to create yourself as a circle. And that's where it gets really fun. And so, you know, we're, we're sort of in the coronavirus era right now. And it's very difficult to get to the dojo, but there's no classes going. So you're, you become the dojo. You become the dojo. Okay. And this is my training partner. This becomes my subversion of the magical spear that Izanagi Izanami held. Izanami, left side, Izanagi, right side. We're standing on that floating bridge, creating Now, my center is in space. It's a much more original sense of itself, not so much I. It starts out I, but I clears. Ah, goes to the more original of itself. Then, Establishing that point in more original sense of I to self, we start to create ourselves as a circle. The circles get very fun. Okay, so if you've got an umbrella or a short staff, or you have enough room to use a regular staff, go outside in your yard. Uh, you can trace all this stuff. I, I've tried to lay out the uh, process of it. But David, just check in about the time. Or how till. Are we? What? Quarter till one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, do you mind uh, pressing record on this session? We've been recording since you started. Okay. But I mean, in terms of actual saving it, I'd be kind of, at some point, like to kind of see it and see what, what it's kind of like, just the presentation. So. I'll, I'll save the files and put them somewhere for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um.
Um, I don't know who's out there, so maybe I'll just press this and we'll see. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, so, anybody with a question on, you know, any of this stuff at all? Boom, boom, boom. You guys kind of... See, what I want you to see, it looks very bright. See, I'm, I'm going this way. No, this boom, 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 boom. So it's not just somebody waving a scot there, but boom, boom, boom. Now that's that's you wouldn't do that in the martial sequence behind the back or between the legs. It's just up. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. If you get a chance, again, this is uh, not homework, but uh, go on to YouTube and just just on search put rising like the sun, Stephen Curry. And it's about a half hour documentary. And it's amazing what those kids in Japan are doing with the basketball. It's amazing. It's just I think it was Sensei would watch that and say, that's Takemusu. And, you know, Takemusu Aiki is, is an expression. Uh, but Takemusu, for, for Izanagi and Izanami, to stand together on that bridge and to create the islands of Japan, there was a, an attraction of love. And out of that love, the love was a binding force that took both of them, along with their magic spirit, standing in that mythical place to create the islands. Or, right? Now here, you're standing right side, left side, so you have Izanagi, Izanami in your body, okay? We don't think that, and I got any movement. But right about here, boom, 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 boom. And right about here, you're not necessarily creating the islands of Japan. But when you get to that place where you're not so much an eye doing the movements, but you are at that point, the center in space, space representing possibly the more original of I, the self. Self going towards something even more original, a true self, a soul, a spirit, whatever. Okay? Then the circle is you creating yourself, just like Izanagi, Izanami. Izanagi, Izanami are in your body. You've got a left and a right. Boom. There's a polarity up, down, heaven, earth. There's a bridge. Boom. And you're holding. The spirit, boom, 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 boom. And when you're doing regular Aikido, boom, you are, when you are, the spear is your, your key. Boom, 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 boom. So, you know, I, you know, I do a lot of work this way. I always have because. I hear boom, 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 boom. Apparently one time, you know, since they had a little spear, and it was supposed to be really good with the spear, and somebody said, well, what makes, what makes you so good with the spear? And those sense they said, look at your shirt. And it was a sharp spear, so he kind of cut the shirt from, and the guy didn't see it. <laughs> I'm not that good, but. So one of the things about it, by the time you see it, it's already done on the cycle. It's about all I can do. See, in terms of this, the spear, uh, you know, uh, cut as well as penetrate thrust. See, these movements, uh, your, your thrusting motion is kind of your cannon fire. These movements are just a lot more what I call. But if, if there's a whole variety of attackers coming in, you've got a sharp tip right here, you come at their own peril. You pick one more, you move out of the circle. So, uh, I don't know that Osensei trained precisely this way, but I think he probably did train somewhat like this at some point. You, know, you see him do a lot of one handed figure. Right?
I think that one change up because just the sequence I call it the one. Cut, fire water change, back, third change here, hands back, back to cost. So cut, and you can just repeat that pattern. Simply that. I kind of like to. Establish a point in space. Space is more original than its consciousness. Self, soul, spirit. It's your magic spirit. Your left and right, Izanagi, Izanami. Are you creating yourself as the circle? And that's Aikido movement, Aikido movement, Aikido movement. Oh, oh. Well, you don't have to just that motion, that motion, that motion. Um, I try to make them like snowflakes. No, there was no two are exactly alike. Right? You're creating yourself as a circle. At your point. You saw the I turning back to self. Boom. Izanagi is on the knee, right and left. Boom. 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 Create yourself as a circle. Boom. That's all we're doing here. Then I get up. It's not just a study of forms, it's whether you're visualizing with yourself. Um, David, why don't we open up and uh, see if anybody has any questions? Hope some of you have been moving because it's uh, you can watch it, it doesn't make any sense, but as you start to move, that's where you start to pick it up. So, you want to open it up, see if anybody has any questions about anything? So, uh, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute and speak up. I'll, I'll put on the multiple screen thing right here. Yeah, I see somebody moving a stick over there. I like that. See, if you just watch it, you go, huh? But you have to move. Right? Good. See, form follows function. But initially, you know, you, you get crazy about a form. And oftentimes people just get locked into the form, you know. Um, if I have about three attackers, they're one, two, three, right? If somebody's coming in, I roll underneath, boom, crossed over here, boom, 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 boom. So if you want to, see you, for me, what I'm interested in is the process of creation. If somebody's coming in over there, then we go that motion, that one. Over here, boom. Somebody comes in over there, boom. If you watch the Zatomichi movies, you know, he's like this and he's picking up some boom, 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 boom. And he has this funny posture where he's kind of like, like this, but he's tuning in. Okay? I think that one of the actors who played Daredevil, the blind superhero, he studied the Zatomichi movies. The first one is Ben Affleck, actually, years ago, 2003. 
right? And then uh, there's a great series on Netflix before it disappears because they're all going to go Disney at some point. But um, those are good. But Disney, move. Trust your movement. Most of this stuff. I used to do this for, for years, and then um, Nadeau Sensei and I were kind of doing some work with the finer energies, and they gave us an assignment. He got one, I can't remember his, but he said, okay, take what you do this way and make a form out of it, just for the practice. So I came up with movement number one, movement number two, movement number three, movement number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. And I worked on that for about a year, and they went, eh, eh, eh. So finally, they said, yeah. And I went, oh, okay. So, so you know, that, that's, uh, we have that 30 movement set. It teaches you change number one, change number two, change number three, change number four, change number five. Five is useful because it gets you into the figure eight. It gets you into the figure eight. Um, the movements three, two, are much more flexible. One is like a cannon. Boom. Three heavy artillery. Boom. But even there, boom, it's possible to change. Yeah? It's a major change. Major change. Major change. And what I do is when I'm holding the short staff, I don't hold it so much in the middle. I hold it more towards the end. Because the long end represents the point of the spear. If I'm holding in the middle, it's real difficult. I lose track. But here, that's a sharp end. 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 So that's what I tend to do. If you've got the longer stash, you just boom, 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 boom. And you can, this can double as sword movement. Boom, 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 boom. So, any questions out there? No? One. Okay, yeah. What is the importance of, or what is the relationship between things that you like doing and misogi? Well, I think at some point, if you really love something, you don't just like, well, you like doing it, that's fine. But you love it. When you're doing something you really love, I mean, not so much, I love something because I'm going to get this or I'm going to get that. Then you are doing a kind of misogi. Okay, you see? And because misogi is basically get you back to a more original place, okay, with yourself. And at that very beginning point in creation, you had Izanagi, Izanami, left, right, masculine, feminine, fire, water, and they stood together as a team to create. Creation came out of love. Therefore, as we are doing that, one thing that, that if you watch the uh, video I mentioned, Rising, you know, just put Rising is in the sun, and Stephen Curry, and the way that Curry puts it is interesting. He's teaching people, you know, a little bit, you know, he goes into, uh, there are first parts about all these people that started doing this stuff, creating this street ball. There's almost nothing to do with what you, what you do with the ball. From the, yeah. It's Takemusu. They just got a ball. Someone said, well, what do you do when you go home? You don't have a hoop. Well, we start moving. 
fun. And so, uh, in fact, they're better at that stuff than he is. Because <laughs> that's what they work on. Now, he can do it too, but you know, his, he's tied to what works in a game, right? But they're just, to use the term, they're just balling. Okay? So when you are in something you love, and Craig makes a great statement right at the end, it shifts into where he starts to do um, camps in Japan. And a lot of them are for, for, for women. Somebody said, well, you never do camps for women. So I said, oh my God, yeah, you're right. So, you know, a lot of he's working with uh, young women about basketball. And the point he made is this. Basketball may not get you to the NBA but it will get you somewhere. Because if you if you love it, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I still, a lot of my inspiration for the Aikido movement. Comes out, you know, I, I mean, basketball got me to Aikido, really. So, the way Curry put it is that you might not get to the NBA, but this will take you somewhere. And again, what, what O-sensei might have said, it takes you from I to your center as that point in space, space being to some degree free, open, empty, but, but we need to be that way for things like love and inspiration to come in. And then the movements you're creating yourself as a circle. So I mean, you know, uh, so basketball didn't take me to the NBA, but it did take me to something like I do. Okay. So anytime you do something that you love, and sometimes it's totally irrational, why in the world do you love this or that? If you love it for a reason, it's not love. Well, that, or the fact that it, it makes you happy, or you're, it inspires you. That's Misogi. Those people that, that in that video, they do that stuff better than Curry does. Because, but they say, you're, 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 you know, one, one sketches a picture of them. And they draw them with muscles. He says, oh, you drew me with muscles. Thank you. I look like a superhero. And they tell him, you're our superhero. Why? He's the inspiration for them. He taught them about something that they love. Okay? And of course, they love him, sort of, you know, but it's secondary. And he didn't do what he does to just get worshipers because he loves basketball. He loves people. So, you know, that's Stephen Curry. <laughs> All right? Um, so, that's a good question. Anybody else want another one? Okay. Don't have to have a question, by the way, but it's a it's kind of, you know, see, any one of these, so you can, you know, I mean, for example, you know, uh, see, by the time I go this way, that way, but I can go that way, that way, or that way, that way, that way. Okay, basketball was interesting. I, I was really, when I was younger, I really had a lot of, of speed going back and forth. I get to the hoop before other people. You know, I was younger, I was fast, okay? But what I really didn't understand was not a little motion. And so on these games, I mean, you know, oh, so they put somebody big in front of you, what are you gonna do? But if you go this way, that way, then you go this way and set to the, but you go the, mm, that way. So that's really the changes in the step. Mm. I can go that way, that way, I can go that way. I can go that way, I can. I can look that way, pass that way. So everything within basketball teaches you about you know, your field of energy, sharing that field with a couple other energy fields, and you create off of that field. Boom, pass. Movement, step back, shoot. So a lot of times, you know, if I come up with ideas with the staff, I just pretend I'm Stephen Curry playing basketball. And you know, it's to me, I mean, since I said he said there are many masters of Aikido that don't know the meaning of the word. And what he also said is the people who practice it tend to understand so little of it. 
because we get so caught up in the form, right? Street ball, as is portrayed in that video, this is some of the best Taki Musu I have ever, I've ever seen. And if a sensei, I, I'm almost certain, if you ever saw that video uh, about young Japanese doing that, I think he would smile. And he would just be tickled pink. Because that was him. He was Taki Musu. <laughs> okay. And we get so caught up in the seriousness of the form, that's very serious. But in order to boom, shed certain things, you kind of loosen up. You got to just be able to establish yourself as a center of space and create yourself in some sort of circle. And that's really, for me, what I do with the staff. I got a lot of time these days. Right? All right. So, uh, anything else for anybody else on that? Okay. So Sensei, I have a question. <laughs> It's a, it's kind of a basic dumb question, but I'm going to ask you. No, dumb questions are, are the best, actually. <laughs> so when I'm, when I'm using a boken or even a shinai back in the day, uh, I sure. know, you know, where the blade is on the katana and everything. Yeah, right. So when I'm using uh, a joe, yeah. um, I know it's supposed to represent a spear, but since both sides do not have the spear tip, I lose track of where the spear tip is supposed to be. And yeah, yeah. is that a problem or is that a feature? No, that's a problem. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, I, you came in a little later. What I mentioned is this is shorter. Okay. If you hold in the Yeah, I was there for that. When you're learning the fire water changes, you hold in the middle. But after a while, you hold long end, short end. The long end represents tip, the cutting. Boom, 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 boom. See, I get lost here trying to figure out where the sharp tip is, all right? But when I hold here, the other thing, for example, if you do a lot of this movement with a regular joke, I screwed this shoulder up for about three years. And then I screwed this shoulder up for about another two. Okay? Because doing the torquing with a larger, longer, heavier staff, put a lot of strain on this shoulder and then that, that shoulder. So what I found was with a longer, heavier, you hold not at the center, or if you do, it's slower, All right? But when you want to pick up speed, you hold with a longer one, and therefore you're not getting this torque, this reverse torque. If that's carrying it that way, that's carrying it that way. That's carrying it that way, that's carrying it that way. With a shorter one, boom, boom. See, it allows me, now all of a sudden I can use it, you know, with more of a sword form. Or, does that make any sense, Cliff? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, just, uh, I like the short, personally. The Do Sensei said that oh, since he had a little pointer stick. You see it sometimes. It's not a sword, it's not a staff, it's not a spear, but you carry a little pointer stick with them. But you watch them sometimes, you know, so you put some sword moves with them. And then, you know, you see, you know, you're always doing spear movements with it. And the Do Sensei said, uh, he's coming back to America, he says, somebody told me that I should ask him for that stick, so I can Bring it home and meditate with it. And he said, that was too chicken to ask. That's what he does to say, put it. Right? So, you know, uh, in, in the Don Juan tradition, uh, Castaneda books, talks about power objects. He said, that would have been a hell of a power object. You know? And the um, story is, you know, that Terry Dobson sensei, uh, he asked the sensei for his belt. So he gets the belt, and there's so much energy around the belt. He can't take it. This is Terry Dobson. So he takes the belt outside, buries it near us. So maybe there's a reason why the dose sensei didn't ask for sensei for the stick. But yeah, it's a proper object. 
Brian goes, great, great, great. I got the magic stick. Ah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, that's said. Uh, anybody else? Uh, did I answer your question, Cliff? I think you'll find it if yeah. you'll, you'll get a better sense of where the kit is. So, so when I'm spinning it, doing like the figure eight and all that, yeah, um, here. Never, don't do it right, right in the center so I know where the here. thumb is. Here, so fire water, thumb down, thumb up. I hold in the middle of the page. But then right about here, so you start to do that. Here, you thumb down, thumb up, thumb down, thumb up. It takes a little bit of that. It takes a little bit of practice. Double chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's when I'm spinning that I lose track. Well, if you have a long end, you know, right. and is the short end. You know, you, you, for example, certain things I don't want to go here. Well, I don't have to move the body. Oh, but so it's practice and blending some of the body turning or the tie sabati. So that's that's one of the challenges. You know, when, when you don't have a dojo partner, you 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 can learn a lot of that. The other thing is, for example, when you're here, you are in a flow state. And then you do the same thing when you're doing a regular IQ one. Um, uh, the forms of IQ, though, know, are supposed to have that. Magical. Izanagi is anami, fire water. So that, that part of it is for me, um, that's, that's a lot of what I do. And uh, you can work with a heavier staff, which you kind of find, for example, is as you're doing this. Um, now, if I work with something a little heavier, it's not a staff, but you know, the, the, the vibration waves currents get a little heavier. Even, you know, just doing the, the actual boom, cutting motion. Boom. See, people hold way too hard. If you go like this, you're actually pulling out of the cut. If you, boom, boom, boom. Boom. But when I'm doing that, um, I'm trying to, you know, the, the energy is circulating off of the movement of the staff. Boom. I want to keep that versatility. Boom. I don't want to get too heavy. Boom. So even though it's a heavier weapon, I, you know, I'm working still that light. Fluid freedom, freedom, freedom. Okay, so uh, as I said, I'm I'm kind of using this as a joke, all right? But it is substantially heavier. You got to do a little work with heavy. But one of the real tricks of the trade is you know getting pulled into being too heavy. Heavy. Boom. I try to be even lighter and freer in the movements when I work them with something that's heavier. Okay? Uh, anybody else with a question? That was a good question, by the way. Okay? Sensei. Sure. Is the process different uh, with the Vulcan from the Joe? Um, yes and no. The way I would put it, let's go to the Stephen Curry model, mm -hmm. okay? He does all these drills with the basketball. Mm -hmm. In fact, it inspired this whole genre called streetball in Japan, okay? Mm -hmm. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Uh, but uh, in, when the Warriors started, when he really started getting noticed, it was about 2015. Mm -hmm. They have something called a deadlift, which I wouldn't want to try, okay? 
but he could deadlift 400 pounds. And the only guy on the team that could deadlift more than him, and there were some big guys, was this uh, Nigerian guy, Festus Azili, who was a monster. The only guy who could deadlift more than Curry. So, you know, for me, you know, there, there, there's, you know, you, boom. You know, you, I do this sometimes because it, it, it gets you into the heavier dimension. Okay, sometimes you need a cannon. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, uh, the, the flows work light, heavy, light, dark, light, heavy. And what I'm saying is you know, here, when you're doing the fire water changes and the fire changes, the staff is much, or the, the spear is for me, what I was saying is probably trained the most in, but he did work with a sword. Ooh. 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 Okay, and when I'm doing that, uh, I get, uh, I get more what I call substantive. For me, it's uh, the equivalent of Stephen Curry uh, lifting weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see what I mean? In other words, Bruce Lee uh, knew enough not to lift weights and get bulky, but he did lift weights. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the, the supporting practice is more like the IQ equivalent of weightlifting. <laughs> you see, I mean, if you're a pitcher, you, you don't lift heavy. Hitters do because you know uh, you know you you're going you gotta go <clears throat> <clears throat> that way you know when you go <clears throat> you gotta you gotta do that now oh never did oh work almost entirely with a bat he did certain aikido centering movements okay and he cut with a sword he didn't do a lot of the weight stuff and he accredited his abilities in baseball. To, to his understanding of Aikido, mm -hmm. okay? But, you know, he did certain things, like, you know, cut through bamboo and everything like that. So he had certain tangible physical things. If you just want to burn off steam, uh, then, then take the bokken, you know, and just, just cut, right? And the thing about it is don't count. Boom, just keep cutting. Boom, boom, boom. You just keep going. Wow. And when you say, if you do that, you will burn off a lot of crazy energy. And in the process, you know, you, if you check your body, what I always do when I do a period of that, I go on to the lighter movements. Mm -hmm. Find that if you just go like that, people that way, they get, um, they get too heavy. Uh, one of the conversations I had with um, Robert Nadeau yesterday, uh, one of uh, his longtime students uh, studied with a Tai Chi master, uh, Cheng Man Cheng. And uh, most things, you know, they work kind of the point here. You get the point heavier, you get thicker, you get stronger. And Cheng said, no. You work the up, down, down, up, boom, mm -hmm. okay? And my Tai Chi master, Master Shui Kong Man, he told me the pretty much the same thing. He just said a lot of people were at kind of, you know, developing the chi in the body, and they get thicker and stronger. But the way that Master Choi put it, he said, his truth was that you didn't do that, you didn't develop your chi in the body, you know, he said, boom, 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 boom. Okay? In other words, says you, boom, you, boom. You establish a relationship with the chi, boom, and that, you know, the chi moves you. Or you create yourself, or you establish that center in space, I, to some level of self, boom, what happens is, that's what happens, boom, then boom. You're fluid, boom, 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 boom. So if you're using striking form, or mm -hmm. if we go back to, you know, the staff, it's, uh, 
Um, but there's a place, you know, I'm not sure I'm still working on, where that looks like a light movement, boom, and boom, it's very powerful. Twitch of a sense they would cut like that. And one time somebody was had an attitude, you know, like I'm better than you guys. You, you Japanese, what do you know? I'm a big American that's sophisticated. I know a lot more than you guys. You hips in the country. And so he tells this guy, get a bokeh. And says, grip it as hard as you can. And he took a bokeh. And he said, I'm going to knock that out of your hand. You're not going to feel a thing. And this guy just said, Fruit. These guys don't know anything. So he goes to search and he closes his eyes so he can't be hypnotized. Okay, and Tojima Sensor takes his bow pen, goes like this, goes like that. Did not tan stand there and went boom. And what was interesting about it was he not only knocks the bow pen out of the guy's hand, but he Breaks the sword in two. Wood cutting through wood. The top half of the, of the guy's bokeh went all the way up and hit the ceiling of the dojo and bounced down. And the hand, he, the, the, the bottom half, hit the mat and bounced up where it almost touched the ceiling and then came down. And the guy was like this. He thought he was still holding the sword with his eyes closed. And so after that, this guy comes up to me and says, hey, Jack, I think that guy, meaning Tojima Sensei, talks a lot. I didn't have a lot of respect for that guy because he mouths off a lot. He said, but I'll tell you one thing, I didn't feel a thing. So, you know, if Tojima Sensei had put a lot of, he would have maybe knocked the sword down. But Tojima Sensei just, boom, just did that. So, there's a certain sort of mysterious power. You know, because people say, ki, you know, the, there's a, you know, what was Sensei called ki no yo the miraculous functioning and aspects of ki. That's what was Sensei had. And that was something, you know, I mean, you stand, on that floating bridge where the Izanagi and Izanami, you know, you position there, at least, but with the point, not the point in the world of weight, but in space, your vision of self. You create yourself as a circle. You're creating yourself, you're also creating your own environment. But he said, you know, just create a beautiful world. He wasn't talking about it. You know, going up and cleaning the litter, well, that would be good. You know, one thing about the coronavirus is that the, the environment is getting better. There's less pollution. It's really, I mean, it's not necessarily, you know, the best thing, right? But, you know, the fact is when there are less cars and less like social this, then, then everything starts to have a balance to it. You know? Okay, so that's the kind of what we call the silver lining to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be nice if we got a certain sense where we could do that a little bit more, you know, without the, 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 the crisis. But we create our own, you know, we create our own world. How does that, what the dose sense they said he was going to work on today? Because you can learn to stand better, or you can learn to swing the sword better, or move, or move the staff better. The one thing that, that he's saying is that, okay, this is the center, it's a point in space. It's not something you're going to, I'm going I'm to get better at the center to swing the sword better or harder or faster. Yeah. And then you start to create yourself as a circle. It's not just your body, but your world, your realm, your environment situation. Yeah. So that's uh, something that, that I think is important for us to, because we go back more towards the original of O Sensei's teaching. He was giving us technology. You know, right now the world, the way he put it there is that too much attention in the outer world, in the mechanical world, 
That's why he says, that, you know, go back to more what he called the spirit. He based the world more upon the original design. He's not like the zonani or spirits. They're energies. They're not, in some sense, physical. Okay. And to stand with Izanagi, Izanami in that sacred place uh, is not to stand there as a body. Returning the body so that the I learns through as a body that's more original with itself. It starts to feel itself more as energy, finer energy, more original energy. The movements become easier, freer. And off of that, then what happens is that uh, the I returns to self, and at that level, if you have Izanagi, Izanami as your parents, um, you know, in the Superman mythos, right? He has earthly parents, Jonathan and Martha Kent, okay? They're farmers. But he has celestial parents, Jorel and Laura. Jorel. And so he comes from the stars, and so he's Superman. He's kind of a, you know, he has his earthly parents. And you have this God parents, right? And so if we were standing there kind of on that bridge, you know, as a child or as, a, as, as another, as a presence, as a self, as a soul, spirit, along with these and ideas and on it, then our actual the circle we create is universal. And that was, I think, what the sense that was trying to get. And then things like uh, Izanagi, Izanami, they don't create, but that there is this binding attractive force called love. Okay. And so getting to that original place where everything came out of that love, then you're going to create peace. You're going to create beauty. You see, I mean, there's nothing else you can create there. But then as we go into a journey, from all that, God, God has heard into I in physical matter. Uh, there's all this strife and conflict, limitation. So since I was saying the journey back, you know, to, to, to sort of like paraphrase Star Trek, you know, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Well, since they went there, he traveled the universe, not in a spaceship. And his prime directive was get back to that original place, stand as an original spirit, soul, with parent energies, Izanagi, Izanami, in that place of creation, the floating bridge, and learn to create, as you are forming the circle around you, something that is beautiful and balanced. And if we can do that, then we'll survive the coronavirus and everything will be, will be better for it. And if we don't learn that lesson, there'll be another one. <laughs> and maybe, you know, the point is to not handle things like that. The point is to create the world so that we don't have those, that we're in harmony with nature. Coronavirus is nature saying, look, notice me. You guys are so technologically advanced. Uh, you think you could ignore me, but you can't. And so nature's saying, and so here we are. So uh, anyway, I think that's, uh, anybody else with a question? Thank you, Sante. Okay, all right. Uh, so David, I think uh, if you would somehow save this, one, I'd like to kind of see what it's like. Okay? David? Okay. So, Yes, thank I'm, you. I'm saving it and, and I'll, I'll get in touch with you in a few minutes. Yeah, all right. Okay, well, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign out. Take care. Thank you, Sensei. Have a Bye -bye. good day.